Hello. Welcome to Meeting with Bishop. You all know who he is. Dr. Bruce Hart. So y'all just in your face. Gotta say no more. Go where you want to go to. All right. We want to get going today. Want to get going. And I'm hoping uh, there again that uh, this is going to be a blessing. And we will consider all questions or rebuttal. Send me some letters. Show your support. Show you here. All right. Yesterday we were talking about peace of mind, presence of mind. Don't be around the fight. Don't be thinking about the fight. Be in the fight. Take what it offers you. As a martial art instructor, one thing I see often in those who are striving for higher levels of mastery is that they're looking to see what their opponent is going to do, which is pretty wise. However, in trying to figure out what the enemy is going to do, what they're trying to do is they're trying to piece what techniques they've learned to whatever he might do. That's way too much thought. Way too much thought. So what I've done is I've devised a strategy to help them to look at whatever is given. And I give them the analogy of going to a banquet and you don't know the person who's preparing it. Sometimes it helps to know. It helps to know who's giving it. that you can at least have a basic idea based on culture. So I know if, if, if I know the person is Spanish or from Mexico, Puerto Rico, or Spain, I can expect some corn products. I can expect some wheat products. I can expect to have a, a pretty good balance of meat and veggie, beans, Things of that nature. So I can adjust. If a person is from, say, a country in Africa, now remember, Africa is a continent with several countries within its borders. And nearly each of them nearly have their own way of preparing. If I'm going to Eat with somebody from Germany. I might expect some sausages, potatoes. I might expect stews, soups. That's what they like. If I'm meeting with somebody from America, I might find a plethora of things. But let me give you a kind of synopsis. Well, if we remember, this is a banquet, so I might find some type of cold salad, like potato or macaroni salad. I may find some barbecue ribs, chicken. Um, brisket, as in Texas, go Texas. Burgers, hot dogs for the kids, sausages, and I may find also some uh, some other types of stuff. Things that are basically finger food. We often say, but you know, paper plate. So it's always nice to know what they're what they're giving you, so that you can. Prepare yourself. However, there are sometimes you're going to go to a banquet, a party, whatever, and you're going to find some stuff that you've never seen before. So what do you do? What you do is you look at it for what it is, see how it's moving. And the only thing you're concerned about in self-defense is keeping something from hitting you. Y'all 
I'm not listening. Okay? You just want to avoid getting hit. So it don't matter. Particularly the intricacies of it. The idea is keep that thing from hitting you. <laughs> so what do you need to do to keep something from hitting you? Okay? You can meet it with contact force. You can meet it with parry force. You can meet it with deflecting force. Or you can move completely out of the way. The best thing to do is probably not be in the way. As in the case of firearms. If you're not, if you're not, uh, they don't have um, bulletproof head. In fact, they don't have bullet. They don't have uh, bulletproof arm cover. Only, only, only warrior I knew that had that two people, the samurai, in the night. They had full protection on their arm. In fact, the in 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 Europe, because the uh, the weapons were also dense as well as sharp, they had they had what's called a coat of mail. A coat of mail is chain link. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is chain links like a fence? It's a small chain link thing that is linked together, and it looks like little little uh, chain together strung together. See, now, nothing's going to stop impact force, but it will stop cutting force, is what I mean. So, you learn to adapt to what's given. And, uh, and what's happened in our society is that people are just wandering blindly. They will prepare to fight their brother down the street to do it quicker, a whole lot quicker. And they'll prepare, then they'll prepare to fight the unseen enemy, the one that hides under paperwork, the one that hides under policies and procedures, the ones that hide under, you know, under the guise of being uh, the one that's supposed to care for you. They'll fight for the wrong reasons, is what I'm saying. So here we are. And we're, we're back at our reading. I'm hoping that you have decided to, uh, to get this. I'm hoping you decided to get it. It's good reading. It's good, it's good to have it <clears throat> in your library. And over the course of the, of the duration, we will be examining different works, uh, including the, the Bible, and how these works correlate with the holy work. All right, here we go. Excuse me. All right, we ended at the interpretation of Sir Hyde. And Mr. Nelson. Now, I want to go out, as I always do, I try to go back and try to uh, recap what we read before. And remember, this was, if you, if you read it, okay, this one was about... Um, Vice Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson, who lived between 1758 and 1805, okay? He was an impulsive guy, okay? He was a very impulsive guy, okay? And because he was so impulsive, the nation decided that he wasn't the one to lead the charge. Wanted somebody with a, a little more dignified. You understand what I'm saying. 
wanted somebody with that that military presence, that cool, calm demeanor. One thing I've learned and throughout my life, and I'm sure that if you're a man, you're watching this too. There are women that talk, you know, that say, oh, I'm against violence, and, you know, you don't want to fight. <clears throat> you don't have to fight to prove you're a man, and absolutely, that is the opposite. You actually do. Because manhood is forged in battle. Listen here. Y'all can quote me. Hold on. Y'all can quote me. Try to get as many friends in here as we can. All right. So many of us have have had the experience of wanting to date a woman that was against violence. And she'll likely say things like, oh, well, you don't have to fight to prove you're a man. And you know what? She's dead wrong. Because manhood is forged in battle. Are you listening to me? See, when you think, when a, when a young man is going through his transition and he's going from boy to man, if he don't get into a schoolyard battle every now and again, he don't know what he's got. He don't know what he'll, he don't know if, if something will make him flinch. He doesn't know. This is why women don't have boxing, but men do. This is why typically women didn't go to the dojo, the men did. In Japan, give you a little bit of history in Japan, they had to invent a war, they had to invent a weapon for the women because the women wanted to take aikido and that was fine they wanted to, to be they wanted to learn how to use swords and they're like that was a no no that was a no no so they created a weapon for them based on maintaining the lady likeness and keeping her far from the battle and that weapon is called the naginata Naginata was basically a five and a half foot, six foot staff with a six to eight inch blade at the end of it. So if she was inside the house and something came in the house, she could stand back from the window and do battle. See, that's, that's being a lady. See, I, I, I want all of you women who are watching this, I want you to get this because there's that, there's that nuance of a position that you can attain where you can wage a battle and still be a lady. Y'all didn't hear what I said. See, you don't, have to, you don't have to use bad language. You don't have to bolster and ruffle your feathers like a rooster. You don't have to put your feathers up like a, like a, a peacock. All you have to do is position yourself. See, that's the hallmark of a lady. I've had situations in my in, in my young life, and I'm sure the guys have too. If you're any kind of gentleman and you're walking with a lady down the street, she doesn't have to be your girlfriend, your, your, your wife. She doesn't have to be your daughter. Just be a lady who's walking with you. And if you're walking down the street, you put yourself between her and traffic. Don't let, your, don't let the girl walk by the curb. And people will say, well, wait a minute. Wait, wait, what, what's the big deal? The big deal is this, prostitution. Hello, that's the first one. The ladies that walk by the street are ladies for sale. Is she for sale? Hope not. No lady I've ever walked with was for sale. Get yourself away from that street. The second thing is traffic in terms of drivers. If somebody jumps the curb by some quirk, not paying attention, maybe drunk, maybe they had some kind of seizure, or maybe they blacking out, too drunk to drive. They jumped the curb. Who's the first? She's by the street. Guess what? Do the math. She gets hit by the car. See, the opportunity to save her 
It's not by pulling her away from the issue because you might miss it. But second, if you're already there, you, it's just a matter of pushing her off to the side. Are you listening to me? Okay. If it happens to be raining, woman's by the street. You know what happens with people. They could care less about who's walking on the curb. She messes, she's walking by a puddle. He hits that puddle. She gets splashed. If she's not by the curb, she might get splashed, but not as much. See, the whole idea behind being a man is always putting those who he's in charge of in a position where they're not harmed. Good afternoon, evangelist. See? That's the hallmark of manhood. Men in this, and I want, I want you ladies to get this. Real men are always interested in your safety at all costs. They're always interested in that. Now, you can maintain your place by saying very little, because he really doesn't need your input to be a man. He doesn't need your input. Okay? Because he's seen enough, and there's an instinct that tells him that he needs to do particular things for you. So don't think you're special because he's doing this stuff. Okay? Now, there are some things he does overtly. That Okay, they're conscious and thought, but there are some things are just natural and normal for him to do. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want him, you don't want him to think about it. Are you listening to me? See, a lot of relationships fail, and this is your this is my living room right now. A lot of relationships fail because there, there's one party that's always trying to tell the other party how to be who they are. And then once they make the change, they don't like the change. The best bet is shut your mouth and let it play out. If the person is displaying traits you don't like, in the beginning, cut it off at the pass. Stop always thinking that that time is going to make things better because it's not. If you're in a relationship and you want that person to change, you need to be out of that relationship anyway because nobody deserves to be manipulated. Nobody. If we make some changes or we suggest changes, we suggest changes because we know that it will be better for you if you do things a particular way. Now. As in the bishop always says to anybody he counsels, ultimately, you're going to do what you want anyway. So I'm just going to tell you. Are you with that? All right. We as strategists, and this is who we are, the, the, the real ministers of God, the real preachers, the real imams, the real um, sheiks, this is what we're doing. We're not trying to control you. We're trying to bring you into the realm of safety. Let us go into the battle. And let me have this disclaimer. Any man who's not afraid to pick up something in defense of his family, he doesn't deserve a family. He deserves to be out there with the other feral animals because you're worthless. I'm here to tell you, women are motivated by the idea that if my man, if, I, if something happened with me, and my man gets a call, it's going to be HTP. Y'all are not listening. See, I realized that somebody actually told me for the first time in like 30 years. They said, you know, we feel really safe around you. I'm like, what? Okay. How's that working out? They said, we just get the impression that if something happens with us and we call you, It's not going to end well for him. I said, well, you're pretty much right. So to keep from having to make the call, we, we, we pass the strategy on to you. And so this is what this is all about. The 33 strategies of war. I'm trying to pass some things on for you. So just remember that you have to be independently strong while being dependent. You're always dependent on a team. No person is truly independent. There's always something that they depend on in order to do whatever they need to do. So in the reading, so in the reading, this is what, this is what, uh, this is what it says. 
okay? And I want you all to get this, and I'm hoping that if you're on YouTube, go on ahead and subscribe to the page. If you're, there we go, let me get that whole thing out there for you. All right. This is what it says. Such men may seem calm, even strong, in times of peace, but their self-control often hides weakness. The reason they think these things through so carefully is that they are terrified of making a mistake and of what it might mean for them in their career. This doesn't come out until they're tested in battle. So listen, here, we got people who, who are not real. And that's the way you find out if they're real when trouble comes. Okay, you want to find out if somebody really care about you? Let the fight come up. When they got to really make a sacrifice. See? Just like the saying goes, people are your friends until you ask them for something. Y'all are not listening to me. Now, let's go through this. This is a long reading. Let's get back down to this one right here. All right. Lord Nelson operated according to the opposite principle. Slight of build and delicate constitution, he compensated for his physical weakness with fierce determination. Are you listening to me? The badger is a very small animal. Very small animal. In fact, this is what I've noticed. I've noticed there's a trend. The smaller the animal, the death knell is a lot richer. Let me give you an example. A big animal will probably rip you apart, but a small animal will hit you with an ounce of venom. But y'all not listening to me. See, a small animal will hit you with some chemical agent. Or just looking at it will probably scare the life out of you, keep you from doing it. Are you following that? I used to walk to, I used to walk to a long distance to get transportation to work. And I'd have to walk down this long stretch of road. And of course, on the highway, the road on the side is not prepared. It's, you know, it's just unfinished. It's trees. It's all that kind of stuff. Well, naturally, the natural habitat takes over. So what you'll see, you'll see deer, you'll see armadillo, you'll see skunks, you'll see, you know, chipmunks, badgers, you know, wolverines, whatever lives out there, you'll get to see it. And so I've noted, I noticed that that the bigger animals, like the tigers, the big cats, got claws and teeth and the ability to catch you if you try to run away. Y'all are not listening. The ones who are further up the chain, talking about primates, they're just, they don't know their own strength. They can't capitulate their own strength. And so when they hit you, they hit you. It feel like four or five guys hit you. Okay? But the smallest little thing, a spider. There's a spider that, it, that, that can bite you. And within a, if you don't get that, that thing treated, it will, it will burn and rot your skin away. Y'all are not listening. Snakes. Snakes usually have venom in it that's a neurotoxin. See? It's designed to help him get food. I'll tell you what, it'll, it'll take an enemy down. They said the black ant, the black mamba. You know, everybody thought the cobra was the most dangerous. No, sir. The black mamba is most dangerous. The black mamba can, can hit you with enough venom with that much venom. Are you seeing that? You see how small that is? See how small that is? See how small that is? That much venom. And if they hit you in a certain spot, you'll be dead in minutes. Like if they hit somewhere where there's where there's vessels, a lot of vessels like the face, the neck, okay, or even in the arm, on the inside of the arm, or the inside of the leg where the Oh, you'll be dead inside. You'll be dead in a minute. There's no antidote. So, so, so here this guy is. He's using that as an example. So what does that say for us? We only 13% of the population. So guess what? 
We need to we need to stop trying to act like we're big and bad because we're not. Thirty percent of the population. And wait a minute, hold it. And that's the entire dark American population. Don't we we can't count the guys that are locked up. We can't count the women. Well, some of them are trying to transition over. Maybe we might be able to. You can't count on the children. So out of 13%, you don't have a big fighting force. Okay? And wait a minute, hold it. Some of those, some of those last two educated folks and folks who are blue collar. Some of those are educated. They ain't trying to fight. Listen here. Some of those are older. Some of those are not in a position to fight. Got family. So what you got left? You got a very small fighting force. I remember a, a, a passage of scripture where um, the, the person was called of God to fight a war. His name is Gideon. Gideon was called to fight a war. And with all the guys that came together, the Lord said, no, that's too many. That's too many. He said, make the appeal. He said, anybody that doesn't want to fight, send them home. The Bible says a third of them left. Okay? And so they were down to, they were down to maybe three, 5,000. And he says, well, go ahead and get them some refreshment. You know, they've been out here all day. So they go down to the waterway. They go down and they start drinking. And the Lord said, the ones that pull the water to their mouths, those are the ones you keep. The ones who put their face down in the water, send them home. That's exactly what just happened. This is all you got, guys. This is all you got. So you need to come with your A++ game. Learn some discretion and keep quiet and hope and hone in your craft. This is what he's, this is what he did, basically what he did. He was small, but guess what? He compensated it with his determination. He forced himself to be more resolute than anyone around him. So he didn't worry about what's going on with so and so. He went on ahead and did his work. If he was in modern times, he would have been the guy in the gym. He would have been the guy running with the weights on him. He'd have been the guy that was running in the rain. He'd be running in, 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 in noonday when it was 100 degrees. He would be running in the cold. He would be the one that you'd see doing all kinds of strange exercises. You wouldn't see him at the club partying. Even if he went to a family gathering, he wouldn't be drinking. He would eat the healthy stuff and not the fr- he would he would be so disciplined. He'd be so disciplined that folks would think he was crazy. That's what you're gonna have to be. They're gonna have to look at this population and start getting scared because you're not doing what you normally do. Listen, listen here. Uh when, when we do the math, when we really do the math, you know how much money we spend on junk? Come on now. For thirteen percent of the population, we basically we basically keep the uh, the neighborhood merchants in business. Why do you think they sell Newports down there? Why do you think they selling they selling all of the stuff you like all your stuff you like to drink? That's what they're selling because they know you gonna come in and buy it. Now I'm in Texas, so they got another population that they cater to in favor. And you know what? You can tell that they're there. You can basically tell who's living in a community in the inner city by what kind of liquor they're selling. You, you're not, y'all not. You can tell it. If you stop doing that, guess what? Business will go down. You know why there's beauty stores in the in in our community and you don't see them out there in the suburbs? Because they know you're gonna need a weed. They're gonna know you need your nails done. They're gonna know they know that you need to paint it, glue it, fry it. Dye it, lay it to the side. They know you got to pump it and prime it. So guess what? It is what it is. So if you want to win this battle, you're going to have to what? Subdue your passion and come on with the come on. Just start being, for women, just start being a lady. You'll kill a whole lot of businesses right away. 
Guys, start being a gentleman. You'll kill a whole lot more business right away. Okay? Chilies? What? Uh, um, Applebee's? Outback Steakhouse? Listen here, they're making a killing on y'all. They're making a killing. Okay, I was blessed to have somebody that can that can bang some pops together. So whenever I want something, all I got to do is make the request. But if I do go out, guess what? I'm going out for adventure. I'm not going out because that's 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 where I particularly favor. But anyway, let's keep it moving. It says he forced himself to be more resolute than anyone around him. The battle, the moment he entered battle, he ratcheted he ratcheted up his aggressive impulse. Okay, he turned it up. Okay, where the other sea lords worried about casualties, the wind, changes in the enemy's formation, he concentrated on his plan. Okay, before battle, no one strategized or studied his opponent more thoroughly. That knowledge, that knowledge helped Nelson to sense when his enemy was ready to crumble. But once the engagement began, hesitation and carefulness were dropped. Okay? Got to go all in. Got to go all in. Presence of mind is a kind of counterbalance to mental weakness. To our tendency to get emotional and lose perspective in the heat of battle. Our sense is losing heart, losing heart, doubt ourselves, becoming unnecessarily cautious. Let me highlight. Are you, did you see that? Your greatest weakness is losing heart, doubting yourself, and becoming unnecessarily cautious. Being more, wait a minute, hold it. Being more careful is not what we need. That's just a screen for our fear of conflict and of making a mistake. What we need, oh, uh, Listen here. What we need is double the resolve and intensification of confidence that will serve as a counterbalance. I'm going to say that again. Being more careful is not what we need. That's just a screen for your fear of conflict and of making a mistake. What we need is double the resolve an intensification, an intensification of confidence. In moments of turmoil and trouble, you must force yourself to be more determined. Call up the aggressive energy you need to overcome caution and inertia. The many, any mistakes you make, you can rectify with more energetic action still. Save your carefulness for the hours of preparation. Uh oh, here we go. Save your carefulness for the hours of preparation. If you're not making any preparation, guess what? You're going to get caught by surprise. But once the fighting begins, empty your mind of all doubt. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that when you pray, believe you received it and you shall have it. See, that's the mental principle here. So you got to see yourself as the winner. Y'all ain't listening to me. If you don't see yourself as a winner, then get ready to take your second place trophy. Y'all are not listening to me. You don't believe you're a winner, get ready to go get ready to get some bandages put on in the hospital. You know, back in the day, you know, when you watch cowboy movies and these guys were in the fight, man, they hit each other, pow, pow. And I mean, they're knocking each other over stuff knocking each other out the window, knocking each other off the horse, kicking each other with full bam, just beating each other down. You know when they knew the fight was over? The guy on the ground couldn't get up. He had to get helped up. <laughs> Good times. See, in my martial art training, and I'm sure that some of you out there who are martial artists knew this, once you got to a certain rank, it was ended on the floor. See? It wasn't about points. It wasn't about, oh, you hit there, you got two points. You hit him in the head, oh, you got two points. No. It was when that person you were opposing couldn't fight no more. 
Okay. Either they tapped out, say Mate, got knocked out the ring, or they got injured. Okay. So in 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 Kempo is like that. In Kempo was like that. Okay. Nowadays, oh, you got to stop at two inches this here. You got to do it this way. Kids are all padded, looking like mummies. Got their hands and stuff all padded up. Oh, we don't want our children to hurt. Well, why are you sending them into the uh, place where there's trained to fight? Make no bones about it. If you're, listen here, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. If you call yourself a Christian, the Bible says we wrestle. I don't know. That sounds like conflict to me. The Bible says put on the whole arm of God. I don't know. That sounds like preparing for a fight. The Bible says I keep under my body and, and bring it under subjection, lest that when I preach to others, I myself might be considered a castaway. What is he training for? He's training for conflict. Put on the helmet. Put on the breastplate. Have my feet shod. Come on now. Even if there's no physical battle, the spiritual battle is likened to a physical one. So all this peace-loving stuff, you get peace when there's no enemy. I don't know. Save your carefulness for the hours of preparation, but once the fighting begins, empty your mind of all doubts. Ignore those who quail at any setback and call for retreat. Find joy in attack mode. Did y'all see that? Look, look at that. Okay. It says find joy in attack mode. Momentum will carry you through. Freeze it out. <laughs> Let me finish this real quick. All right. Now, you see what it says? It says find joy in attack mode. I got to read this. It says the senses make a more vivid impression on the mind than systemic thought. Even the man who planned the operation and now sees it being carried out may well lose confidence in his earlier judgment. War has a way of masking the stage with scenery, cruelty dubbed with fearsome apparition. Once this is cleared away and the horizon becomes unobstructed, developments will confirm his earlier convictions. This is one of the great chasms between planning and execution. Okay, let's stop right there. All right. now. I, I, I want to say this, and I want to say this, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can that we can come to something. Okay, it's real easy to talk about the times we're living in. You know, we doing this, we're doing that. It's real easy to talk about how bad things are, and <clears throat> and how people are not doing so well. But this is what I want you to, I want you to get. If you don't think, if you don't think you're in trouble now, okay, that's cool. Don't make the mistake of thinking because there is no trouble right now that it ain't coming. See, you just, you just might not be affected like everyone else is being affected. See, just like you saw in the beginning. You saw in the beginning how, you know, they're lying about the results. They're, they're been, they've been skewing the uh, data. 
basically lying. Right? And if you haven't asked the question yet, what am I going to do just in case? I don't know. You know, the Bible says consider the ant. What was special about the ant? The ant would gather food into the nest. And the, you know, and they have a strict hierarchy. Soldiers went out to do battle. The, the drones went out to gather food. And to take care of the young. The queen's job, she didn't give any direction. Just made babies. I want you to understand something. That if I'm sitting before you right now, if you're looking at this right now, and you're thinking that maybe uh, you don't know what he's talking about. You're thinking that, you know, y'all know how y'all say things. Let me say this. There's going to come a time, and I'm saying it. I'm saying it now. You're not going to see recordings like this. You're not going to see live. You're not going to see videos. And I'm going to tell you something. You're still listening to mainstream anything. You're going to be so lost that it's crazy. There are some folks who, who uh, went with the, with, with the, the suggestion. And they're suffering right now today. Just because you don't think... You don't think, oh, well, it ain't going to happen to me. Uh, I have to. I don't have a choice. You do have a choice. You always have a choice. Okay? You always have a choice. Some of us choose to be left alone. Some of us choose to not have anybody telling us what to do with us. I've been dead twice. Clinically. So it doesn't scare me. And I'm sure that there's a lot of you out there who are watching this who have had the exact same situation or something similar. You you were slated and, and you were uh, called out for dead. And we're getting ready to call it, call the numbers on you and pull the sheet over. And by some miracle, you are not there. You're here to see this. This is not this is this is not a call to Christ. This is not a call to, to religion. This is a call to common sense. At some point, you're gonna have to pull it together. You're gonna have to pull it together. There's a passage I want to read to you in the book of Isaiah. And then we're gonna close up for today. All right. Isaiah chapter 60. All right. Isaiah chapter 66. It says here, the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my namesake said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemy. Verse seven, before she, tra before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered a man-child. Who had heard of such a thing or seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? Or as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. I shall bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord. Shall I, shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut up the womb? Rejoice with Jerusalem. Be glad for her. All you that love her, rejoice with joy for her. 
and all you that mourn for her. Listen, what he was what he was basically alluding to was this. There was gonna come a time there were during this time when he was something was gonna happen and people were gonna start gathering together. No no planning, no gathering, no message. They're gonna see what was happening, they're gonna see what's happening and just come together. That's what he said. Shall a nation be born at once? Before she travailed, she brought forth. See? Travailing is labor. Before she went into labor. See, there was no indication that this thing was going to happen. That's what's going to happen today. That's what I believe is going to happen today and these days. In these days. It's going to happen to the point that, okay, folks are going to, they're going to drop all of their idiosyncrasies. They're going to drop all of their beliefs. They're going to drop all of that other nonsense that keep people together, and they're going to start looking for each other. Looking for people who are okay. So if you ain't gonna come together because of because you're a dark American, come together because it's smart to. Okay, forget about what you call yourself. Forget about your religious title. Forget about your religious orientation. Forget about whether you're wearing a cross or a fez. Don't stop worrying about whether you you carry a little black book like this. Stop worrying about stop worrying about all that stuff. Because at the end of the day, guess what? It's good versus evil. What side are you going to be on? All right. Uh, this has been meeting with the bishop. You all have a great day. Let our brothers take us out.